Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video from Penglam Kwok video tutorial. This is the A lecture series of planetomy. Here I'll talk about simple permanent tissue and the different types of simple permanent tissue which includes parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma in a nutshell. Permanent tissue. This permanent tissue they perform specific function, one particular function. And once they attain maturity, they will not be able to divide anymore. So the term permanent tissue was given because they have permanent shape, size, and function once they attain maturity. So the process by which meristematic tissue become permanent tissue, this process it is called differentiation. This is an outline classification of permanent tissue. Permanent tissue can be broadly divided into two types, that is simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. In this video, we will be talking in details the different types of simple permanent tissue. Number one, parenchyma, the second, colenchyma, the third, a sclerenchyma, and this sclerenchyma can be further divided into two types, that is fibers and sclerites. In the next video, I will talk in details what is complex permanent tissue and the different types of complex permanent tissue simple permanent tissue this simple permanent tissue they are made up of only one type of cells and they are also known as homogeneous because the composition and the shape and the size mostly they are similar because of that one it is also known as homogeneous tissue and single cell type usually with the same origin they will be having the same structure and they will perform the same function. Simple permanent tissue are again classified into three main types which include parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma further divided into two types, fiber and sclerites. Parenchyma cell. This parenchyma cell is the first type of simple permanent tissue and they are the basic packaging tissue. The cells of this tissue are living, that means they are alive, not dead cells, and they are unspecialized live cells. Unspecialized live cells mean that the cells that can give rise to one or more different types of specialized cells. That means they can form different types of complex permanent tissue. And the cell walls are very thin. These parenchyma cells they have intercellular space between two or three adjacent cells. They have empty space. That empty space are called intercellular space. And they even have large central vehicle and mitral vehicle here. These vehicles are very large, which are present at the center of the cells. And they even have dense cytoplasm. The cytoplasm will be very dense. That means those fluid substances which are present uh, within the cells, they are called cytoplasm. It's very dense. And these parenchyma cells, they are located in the soft parts of the plant, such as cortex and pits. Let's see the function. The function which includes, they get support to the plants and they store food. At the same time, they manufacture food with the help of photosynthesis, that is glucose. And they store nutrients and water. So, idioblast is another term. Those parenchyma cells, sometimes, occasionally, they will store uh, resin, tannins, crystal of calcium carbonate and calcium oxalate within the cells. The types of parenchyma cells, they were called idioblasts. Idioblasts. Let's see the different types of parenchyma cells. Number one, parenchyma. This parenchyma, if you see the picture here, they are the parenchyma cells which contain air in its intercellular space. Between different adjacent plant cells, empty space will be present. So this parenchyma uh, it helps in aeration and buoyancy, so that it can float above the surface of the water. Mostly they will they'll be present in hydrophytic plants. Example in nymphae and hydrilla. Number two, storage parenchyma cells. Those parenchyma cells which store food, they were called storage parenchyma. An example in the roots and stem, chiver. Example in case of potato or colocasium, etc. So those parenchyma cells which store foods or that is a starch, they were called storage parenchyma. And number three, stellate parenchyma. These stellate parenchyma, they look like the star shape parenchyma. If you see the picture here, just like the star shape. And mostly they will be present in the petioles. This is the petioles of banana and in kana. 
So that types of uh, parenchyma which look like the star shape, they were called stellate parenchyma. And number four, the most important one, cholenchyma. This cholenchyma, uh, they uh, contain lots of chlorophyll within the cells. This is one cell and within this, uh, uh, chlorophylls are present. Chlorophylls, they are green pigments which can trap sunlight. Because of these green pigments, photosynthesis will be occur. Uh, inside these cells and they will prepare uh, the food for the plant that is the starch and the function is photosynthesis example you'll find in the uh, mesophyll cells of the leaf and the fifth one that is prosenchyma this prosenchyma the apparent chymata cells uh, become elongated they'll be elongated and they'll be having pointed and slightly thick wall so it provides mechanical support those parenchyma cells which provide mechanical support and which uh, which are more elongated, pointed, and slightly thick, uh, and they have thick cell wall. They are called prosenchyma. The second type of simple permanent tissue that is the cholenchyma. This cholenchyma tissue they are responsible for flexibility of plant. And cholenchyma cells generally occur in the hypodermis of dicostem. That is below the uh, epidermis. This will be the hypodermis. This will be the epidermis. And these cholenchyma cells they are absent in the roots. But it is occurring in the petioles and pedicles. Petioles means the leaf stalk, the stalk or the stem which hold the leaf. It is called petioles. And pedicle means the stalk or the stem which hold the flower. This is the flower. And that stalk, it is called pedicles. And colon chyma, they are supporting and straightening tissue. And the cells are elongated cells. If you see here, it is elongated. And irregularly thickened corner. This are the corner. In the corner, it is thickened. And they have less intercellular space or negligible intercellular space. They are alive, but it can support the plant because of that one. It is called living mechanical tissue. Some functions it include a lot bending of stem when the wind blows and leaf without breaking. And they have elasticity to the growing parts of the plants. Based on pattern of pectin deposition or pectinization of the cell wall, there are three types of cholenchyma. Number one, angular cholenchyma. This angular cholenchyma, it is the most type of cholenchyma with irregular arrangement and thickening at the angles where cell meet. This is the place where thickening at the angles. And this type of cholenchyma cells are found in the Tura and Nicotinia hypodermis. Number two, lacunar cholenchyma. And lacunar cholenchyma. The cells are irregularly errands. They were not errands regularly splitting or diverting here and there. And the cell wall is thickening uh, on the walls. This uh, blue in color, it is a cell wall uh, bordering intercellular space. So th they have the intercellular space and the cell wall are thickening. And they will be present in the hypodermis of epomia. Number three, lamella cholenchyma. So the cholenchyma cells are errands. These cholenchyma cells are arranged compactly, very compactly in layers or row. So these are the cells, one row, second row, third row, and fourth row. So this thickening appears as successive tangential layer, tangential layer. So these are the tangential layer, the cell wall are very thickening. You will find in hypodermis of Helianthus, there is sunflower. Other types of cholenchyma cells are the annular cholenchyma. Uh, you can in the year 1955 reported another types of uh, cholenchyma this annular cholenchyma uh, they, uh, they are present the petioles of neuria this is the petioles so the lumen is more or less circular in shape so those cholenchyma cells which are present in the petioles of neuria they will call annular cholenchyma and the lumen is more or less circular in shape The third type of simple permanent tissue, that is the sclerenchyma. This sclerenchyma, they are a tissue responsible for stiffness, that is hardness in plants. And they are long, if you look at the cell, they are long and narrow, and the cell will be dead. All the sclerenchyma cell will be dead cells. They have thick cell wall, the cell wall will be very thick, and it will be made up of cellulose. Deposition with lignin will be present because of lignin deposition. It's very thick and it's very strong. And they'll be having a small hole between two adjacent cells. So, and they are called simple pits. 
because simple pits are formed uh, because of absence of secondary cell wall deposition and they don't have intercellular space intercellular space will be absent in sclerenchyma cells two forms of or two types of sclerenchyma which include sclerites and fibers these are the two types of sclerenchyma sclerenchyma they are found in the heart covering of seeds and nuts and veins of leaf and stem around vascular bundle which include xylem phloem and cambium the function is that they provide strength to plant parts and they provide mechanical support to the plant so sclerenchyma they are also found in the outer covering of pear fruit that is the naspati and in the outer covering of strawberry and outer covering of guava fruits the first type of sclerenchyma tissue and uh, that is the sclerites these sclerites they are spherical or cylindrical in shape and they are also known as stone cell because these sclerites they are very hard and the cell wall is made up of highly thickened dead cells and they have narrow lumen small hole they are called small hole is called narrow lumens and mostly they are found in the outer surface of fruits and seeds and they give hot texture to the seeds coat endosperm etc there is another sclerites called filiform sclerites so the sclerites are present in the leaf lamina of oleo europa leaf lamina means leaf blade so those sclerites which are present in the leaf lamina that is leaf blade of oleo europa they were called filiform sclerites they are very much elongated and fiber light in about one millimeter in length so the types of sclerites which are found in oleo europa it is called filiform sclerites and they also have pits here pits mean a small hole between two adhesion plant cells Let's discuss the different types of sclerites. Number one, branchiosclerites, or it is also called stone cell because it looks like a stone. And they are isodimeric, that is oval in shape. They will be having hard cell wall. And mostly they are found in the bark, pit, cortex, hard endosperm, and fleshy portion of some fruit, example, pulse of the pyrus. And number two, macrosclerites. These sclerites, uh, they are elongated, look like the rod shape, found in the outer seed coat of leguminous plants, light. Like Crotalaria and pisum in the pea in the pea seeds uh, They will be covering the pea seed those outer covering it is called macrosclerites and number three osteosclerites or bone cells Since it look like the bone it is also known as bone cells. So here rod shape with dilated then in tapering and what the end will be uh, taper or it will be more uh, bigger compared to the middle portion so they occur in leaf and in the seed core example in seed core of mm, pisum and hakia number four astrosclerites they look like the star sap these are the lobes an arm diverting from a central body so they occur in the petioles and leaf example t nymphia and tocodendron triclosclerites this triclosclerites they look like the hair and very thin wall sclerites Numerous small angulars, just like the angular angle will be present and are embedded in the wall of these clerics. Mostly they are present in the stem and leaf of hydrophytes. Hydrophytes mean those plants which uh, live on or inside the water. Example, nymphia, leaf, area roots of monstria, etc. The second type of sclerenchyma tissue, that is the fiber. This is a transverse section and this is a longitudinal section of a single fiber. So this fiber, if you see the picture here, it's elongated just like a needle shape with pointed tips. The tip will be pointed and keep in mind that uh, those fibers, they were all dead cells and they'll be having thick cell wall. The cell wall are very thick and it also have narrow lumen. Small hole will be present. These are the lumen and they have simple pits the pits that means a hole because of the absence of a deposition of secondary cell wall and that's so that the cells will be able to connect or pass information or they can even pass or they can even send different types of nutrients or water between two adjacent plant cells so it is also called supporting tissue 
and fiber have a great commercial value in cottage and textile industry for producing ropes or different types of uh, things types of fibers which include number one wood fiber or xylary fiber so this wood fiber or xylary fiber mostly uh, they are produced from the vascular cambium and within the vascular cambium there is in the xylem tissue because this cambium they produce xylem and the phloem so those fibers which are produced from vascular cambium or xylem tissue they are called wood fiber or xylary fiber this wood fiber xylary fibers are of four times number one libriform fibers fiber trackage septate fiber and gelatinous fibers the second bus fiber or extra xylary fiber so this bus fiber or extra xylary fiber they are present or produced from the phloem and these are bus fibers are strong they are very strong and they are of cellulosic so those fiber which obtain from the phloem or after bark of jute can have flax and hemp plants they are called pericyclic fiber and are actually phloem fiber keep in your mind that those fiber which are produced from the phloem they were called bus fiber or extra xylary fibers surface fiber and they are produced from the surface of the plant's organ mostly which include cottons and silk cottons are the example they occur in the testa or the outer surface of the leaf for mesocarp fiber fiber obtained from the mesocarp of droops light coconut so let's see the picture of this uh, mesocarp fiber in coconut so this the this is the exocarp and this portion is the mesocarp and here we have the endocarp which cover the endosperm the jubi or the coconut so those fiber which obtained from the mesocarp they were called mesocarp fiber well, fiber obtained from the mesocarp of droops light coconut and number five leaf fibers fiber obtained from the leaf of musa that is banana agave and sensivinera they were called leaf fibers here let's discuss some importance fiber which we use in our day-to-day -day life economically these fibers they are classified as follow textile fibers the fiber utilized for manufacture of fabrics, netting, and cordage, etc. This textile fiber, the fiber, are divided into three types: A, surface fiber, which include cotton, and B, soft fiber, example flax, jute, and rami. And the third one, hard fiber, example which includes sisal, coconut, uh, pineapples, abaca, etc. Number two, brass fiber. Fiber utilized for manufactures of brasses and broom for cleaning the floor, etc. Number three, route weaving fiber. Fiber utilized in making basket for storing things, a chair, mat, etc. The under route weaving fiber. And this fiber also they are used for making paper deco, paper making fibers. And number five, filling fibers. Fiber is for uh, stuffing cushion. In our place, we call it as the lob. A mattress, pillow, furniture, etc. Example, um, bomb bags and silk cotton, etc. There is one important, uh, uh, another peculiar functions of fiber. There is fibers are the longest plant cells, and these longest fibers are course in a uh, bomeria, uh, which is about 55 centimeter long. Comparison between parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma cells. Types of cells. These parenchyma cells, they are alive, that is living plant cells, which originate from or derive from the ground and protodom meristem. And colenchyma cells, they are also alive, that is living plant cells, which originate from the procambium. And sclerenchyma, they are dead plant cells, which originate from ground meristem as well as protodom procambium. Uh, location, parenchyma cells, they are present in the soft parts of the plant, and colenchyma, they are present in the leaf stems and the petioles of the leaf and this clan chyma they are found in major parts of the plants or the tree within the stem and natures of cells these parenchyma cells they are unspecialized and uh, living cells and colon chyma cells they are specialized and living cells sclerenchyma they are specialized mature and 
that sells cell wall the cell wall uh, present made above of cellulose but in case of this uh, colon chyma the cell wall they are made up of pectin and hemicellulose sclerin chyma the cell wall are very hard and thick cell wall made up of lignin intercellular space will be present in parenchyma but intercellular space will be very uh, less amount will be present in colon chyma and sclerin chyma intercellular space will be absent so the cells are tightly packed function these parenchyma cells they help in storage of food and gaseous exchange and and in photosynthesis for preparing glucose and colon chyma cells they provide mechanical support and elasticity to the plants sclerin chyma they provide mechanical support to the plant help in transportation of water and nutrients to the plants so that's it for simple permanent tissue i hope that's helpful